O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice, and whatsoever else may hinder us from godly union and concord, that as there is but one body and one spirit and one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so we may be all of one heart and of one soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and may with one mind and one mouth glorify thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello again. So that introductory bit, uh, the prayer, was from the uh, 1662 Book of Common Prayer International Edition InterVarsity Press that I've been using for morning and evening prayer uh, since the uh, beginning of January, January 1st. And it's from this section in the back uh, that they have labeled additional prayers, where they have taken prayers from various Anglican communions around the world and included here in an appendix uh, for those who maybe want to use the 1662 prayer book, uh, but they have their own kind of favorite or most used prayers in their own uh, prayer book, maybe that had evolved on uh, just slightly different lines than the 1662. Um, so it would be nice if there were a table or some footnotes or something that told us what prayer book this came from, uh, but I, I don't know. It, it's from somewhere outside of the U.S. and uh, outside of uh, Great Britain, from what I can tell. But uh, it, it's this uh, prayer for the unity of the church sort of echoes Christ's own prayer for uh, unity and his wish for unity in the church that he founded. And I wanted to uh, start with that uh, because I wanted to talk about the subject of uh, the splintering, the division, the uh, breaking up into various denominations that we see in the Protestant church, at least, and Protestant as the big break from Catholicism. And uh, just wanted to kind of um, discuss the idea that some of the divisions maybe aren't as deep, they aren't as uh, significant as they at first may seem. Now, obviously, there are serious uh, doctrinal um, theological issues uh, that have separated believers from the beginning and continue to do so. But um, just by way of example, uh, I have here a prayer book, a Catholic prayer book, Blessed Be God, which is a beautiful book that I've uh, shared before on this channel. I got at my local Goodwill has this zippered case, and it's a fantastic book, which is sort of a prayer book um, that combines some parts of the uh, the, the Sunday Missal and uh, just a, a personal devotional book and a lot of very interesting things combined here. But I want to specifically look at the part that was designed to be used at Mass for the um, Epistle and Gospel readings and that includes the collects. And I want to compare that against the Book of Common Prayer, the 1662 version. I'm using this one here, uh, Cambridge, just because it lays flat a little better than the, uh, than the IVP edition does. Um, and I can't do this with one hand. So, let's... Uh, Actually, just past Ash Wednesday. Let's start with the first Sunday in Lent, which when I'm recording this is what we're approaching. So let's turn to... Oh, I got right to it. Okay, so I have the first Sunday in Lent in both of these books. Again, um, Blessed Be God, a prayer book, a Catholic prayer book. Uh, this has the...
imprimatur and such like in the beginning, in case you're Nile Obset imprimatur. So you know this is a uh, Catholic book and a wonderful and beautiful one. I'm sure if you happen to be Catholic, this would be something that would be very useful. Uh, but I found it interesting as a uh, as a child of uh, the Reformation. Anyway, back to the text. First Sunday in Lent, the collect in each of these. Okay, so the collect in the um, Blessed Be God, which matches the, the Missal. I'll have to get out my uh, uh, daily, my uh, Sunday Missal to, uh, to check against this. O God, who dost every year purify the church by the fast of 40 days, grant unto this thy family that what things they strive to obtain of thy hand by abstinence, they may turn to profit by good works through our Lord, etc. First Sunday in Lent. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness to thy honor and glory who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Kind of similar themes, obviously, as the beginning of Lent, but not the same collect. But let's turn to the second Sunday in Lent from Blessed Be God. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves, keep us both inwardly and outwardly, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may hurt the soul, through our Lord, etc. 1662, Anglican Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen clearly translated from the same root source, which was likely the Latin, the Roman rite, um, from which Cranmer was working. Third Sunday in Lent. Let's move this over. From Blessed Be God, we beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the desires of thy humble servants and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense through our Lord, etc. Common Prayer. We beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I can keep going. Fourth Sunday in Lent. From Blessed Be God, grant we beseech thee, Almighty God, that we who for our deeds are justly punished by the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved through our Lord, etc. Common Prayer, grant we beseech thee, Almighty God, that we who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished by the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we go through this uh, up through Easter Day. I was just kind of looking to see the parallels. So um, from the beginning of the year, fourth Sunday in Advent is the same, or you can tell it's the same um, Latin that they're translating. So fourth Sunday of Advent, uh, let's see, first Sunday of Epiphany, second Sunday of after Epiphany, I'm sorry, Epiphany Sunday, second Sunday after Epiphany, third Sunday after Epiphany, fourth and fifth Sundays after Epiphany, um, Septuagesima, Sexamagesima, the second Sunday in Lent, third, fourth, fifth Sundays um, in Lent, fifth Sunday in Lent um, being called Passion Tide, Palm Sunday and Easter Day all have the same collects. And that's where I stopped comparing. I, I could go on and, and show that throughout the year there are many times where there's agreement between the Roman rite as translated into English and the um, collects that Cranmer was using. Now, we know that Cranmer was working from older source material and that he was trying to simplify the Roman rite and not completely replace it. He was translating it into English, which was a new development, and 
Now the Catholic Church has did the same later, um, so it's that's not surprising. But just kind of highlighting that um, as far as evolution goes, you look at a table of a mammal development, say, and you might look at uh, horses and hippopotamus and how they diverged and have been spreading further apart, um, you know, over the thousands, millions of years and how uh, it's surprising that they both originated from a common ancestor, and, you know, as a scientist would say, this is not like that kind of, this breaking apart of the English church from the Roman church. And I would suggest the breaking apart of all these denominations isn't as radical as that. Uh, there's fracturing, but then those lines continue along parallel tracks rather than moving further and further apart. At least I think in the main, uh, that's what I would suggest has happened in the church. Maybe I'm just being optimistic and hopeful that at some point we can actually fulfill the Lord's wish and have unity in the church. Uh, probably not in my lifetime, but I just found this fascinating to compare the two. Um, how the collects were clearly translated from the same source again and again and again. Certainly there are collects that Thomas Cranmer himself wrote uh, to replace something, whether he found it objectionable or he thought it would be hard to swallow for the Puritan side or the uh, more Anglo-Catholic side. Um, I don't know what the motivation was for the changes that he did make. So some of the collects are new and from the pen of Thomas Cranmer. But a good chunk of them, and so far the majority that I've seen from the beginning of the year till now, have been paralleled in the Roman Rite as translated into English. Found that fascinating. Um, again, this is a wonderful book. Has a lot more than just that. Um, incidentally, I didn't say this, but the it's not just the collects that are paralleled, but the readings. First Sunday in Lent. Let's see. I don't know about the first Sunday in Lent, but the second Sunday in Lent where we began. Let's go back there. The readings are the same as well. Second Sunday in Lent. <clears throat> so the um, Blessed Be God has you reading 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 7. Book of Common Prayer, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 8. Gospel reading, Matthew 17, 1 through 9. Okay, this is a little different. Matthew 15, rather than Matthew 17 in the uh, Common Prayer. Third Sunday in Lent. The epistle is Ephesians 5, 1 through 9 in Blessed Be God. Ephesians 5, 1 through 14 in Common Prayer. Fourth Sunday in Lent. And, you know, this carries on before Lent and presumably after Easter. Not on all days, but uh, on many days. Uh, the epistle for the fourth Sunday in Lent, Galatians 4.22, Galatians 4.21 to the end of the chapter, and the gospel reading John 6 and John 6. So uh, the parallels are not just in the collects, but in the readings prescribed as well. Just thought that would be of interest to some. It's of interest to me. Uh, I'm going to look now quickly at the Roman Missal, uh, the, uh, or the, the Sunday Missal that I have, just to see how that compares. Okay, so then just as an appendix here, uh, the St. Joseph, the new St. Joseph Sunday Missal, which is the only Missal I have, I have a daily Missal of the same year, the same vintage, uh, does not line up with blessed be God and therefore not with common prayer. And I wonder if it has something to do with when it was created. This clearly is post Vatican II. It's from the eighties and this is 1920s. So prior to, I wonder if that makes a difference. Uh, I'm not um, Catholic, so I don't know the answer to that. Maybe a kind Catholic stumbling by on my channel can answer that for me. Um, because I don't know the answer to that. 
but certainly parallels between uh, the kind of the lectionary of readings for Sundays in this pre-Vatican II, Blessed Be God prayer book with the Book of Common Prayer, 1662. And those same collects are carried over into uh, later American prayer books up to 1928. 1979 is a departure from that, um, likely similar to the way that uh, this missile is a departure from pre-Vatican II uh, lectionaries and, and prayers. So that's all for today. I made this longer than I intended to, but hopefully that was of some interest to someone. Thanks for watching this today. Uh, join me next time when I will do who knows what. Um, I appreciate you stopping by and uh, watching, commenting, all of that. And I hope to see you here next time.